Okay, with this question, we are working through elasticity examples, and it's taken from Krugenwell's chapter 6, the elasticity question, question 11. Um, it asks, use an elasticity concept to explain each of the following observations. Um, so starting with A, during economic booms, the number of new personal care businesses, such as gyms and tanning salons, is proportionally greater than the number of new businesses, such as grocery stores. So with booms, what is being implied here is that incomes are rising. So it says as incomes are rising, the number of new personal care businesses uh, are increasing. So the quantity demand is increasing. So think about income elasticity. Um, income elasticity is how much um, quantity, the percent quantity changes, um, quantity demand changes, given a change in income. So here we're having a positive increase in income, and then we're seeing a positive increase in quantity demanded for both of these types of goods, both personal care businesses and these, these other new businesses like grocery stores. In both those cases, um, the income elasticity is positive. So with, po uh, with positive income, income elasticity, we're dealing with normal goods. Normal goods, the demand for them increases as incomes increase. Uh, normal goods would be opposed to like inferior goods or non-normal goods. Um, Examples of, of those are like things like, I don't know, like spam, uh, meat. So as incomes decrease, the demand for some cheap items like spam uh, increases. So these are all normal goods because the income elasticity is positive. Um, the other thing is giving us is the ability to compare income elasticities between personal care businesses like gyms and grocery stores. So it says that these personal care businesses, um, the number of them is increasing um, faster than the number of stores like grocery stores is increasing. So it's saying that the responsiveness um, to the responsiveness of quantity demanded to changes of income for um, goods and services like personal care businesses uh, is more than with these other types. So the income elasticity is greater for gym type memberships than for, um, I guess, older, more traditional retail businesses like grocery stores. So this example is pretty, a pretty straightforward application of income elasticity and comparing two types of businesses that have different income elasticities. These new personal care businesses, the idea is that uh, if income rises, the demand for them is going to increase at a certain rate than uh, stores like grocery stores, you know, non-economic booms, you know, recessions, that sort of thing. These types of business will probably take a bigger, um, fair, like a more difficult time uh, and lose a lot more businesses, lose a lot more business than um, these other, these older traditional types of stores like grocery stores. Okay, so part C, uh, part B. Cement is the primary building material in Mexico. Um, after new technology makes cement cheaper to produce, the supply curve for the Mexican cement industry is relatively fat, flatter. Sorry, price elasticity of supply and supply is um, given the percent change in price. Um, the elasticity of supply gives you the sense by which the supply curve um, reflects um, how supply is going to change given changes in prices. Um, in a sense, that's like the slope of the supply curve. Um, let me let me show you. So here's you know a, a little supply demand diagram for um, the market for cement. Um, so let's take a supply curve that looks like this. So here, um, given a change in price, so let's say price goes from the old equilibrium P-star up to this new level up here, um, how much is quantity changing? So quantity, um, given a, a new price at this location, you might have quantity, you'd have quantity demanded, quantity supplied shift from this point to this point. And price elasticity of supply is giving you a sense of the slope of the supply curve and how responsive changes, um, how responsive um, changes in supply are to changes in price. Um, if, on the other hand, the supply curve were to become flatter, then the same in price is going to result in a significantly larger change.
So if we had a relatively small movement in quantity supply, this would we have a relatively larger movement in quantity supply. Uh, let me actually clean up this to make the point a bit more clear. So I'm going to call this supply curve flat, uh, and I'll do another one. Give me, give me one second. So here's a steep supply curve, and here's a flat supply curve. The steeper supply curve is more elastic. The flatter supply curve, uh, actually, the steep supply curve is more inelastic. And then the flat supply curve is more um, elastic. The idea behind this question is that some sort of technology has come along, uh, and it means that uh, firms could more easily enter and exit the market, or they could more cheaply enter the market. Um, so the idea is that the supply curve with this new technology went from the steeper curve to this flatter curve, um, and with because with firms more easily able to, to enter the market, given a change in the price, you're going to get a bigger response in uh, quantity supplied. So let's say the price goes from like you know a dollar per ton up to three dollars per ton. Given a new technology that makes things uh, relatively uh, cheaper to enter the market, you're going to get a relatively you know more firms entering the market to compete given that increase in price. Um, so this new technology is going to flatten out the um, supply curve, um, meaning that uh, changes in price results in much bigger changes in quantity supplied. So this question here um, is a nice example of how price elasticity of supply gives you a, a better sense of what's going on in the market. Okay, moving on to the next question. Uh, it asks, uh, some goods that were once considered luxuries, like a telephone, are now considered virtual necessities. And as a result, the demand curve for telephone services has become steeper over time. Um, so for this, we're going to use the price elasticity of the band concept. The price elasticity of demand is um, given a percent change in price. What uh, percent change in quantity demanded do we get? Um, if you get like a, a percent change in price, you know, say one percent change in price, and you get a really, really big percent change in quantity demanded, we say that type that good is an elastic good. Uh, and elastic goods tend to be things like luxuries, um, luxuries that aren't really needed. So what we're saying here is. Um, back, you know, so 100 years ago when telephones were considered luxuries, um, if you change the price, if the price of a telephone increases, you'd expect this kind of larger change, uh, this larger decrease in the demand for um, things like telephones. Um, but today, um, as a telephone and cell phones have become necessities, given that same 1% change in price, you'd expect a smaller percent change, uh, percent decrease in the the demand for telephones because these are necessities. So it's almost like no matter what the price um, is for a telephone, you're going to have to still you're still going to need a telephone. So it's th this good becomes more e inelastic the more of a necessity it is. Um, so visually, um, on the with a demand diagram, it might look something like this. So you got the price of telephones on the vertical axis, quantity of telephones demand uh, on the um, horizontal axis, and then we have two demand curves. Um, this one is steep, reflecting inelastic demand, and then this one is uh, a flat demand curve, reflecting elastic, more elastic demand. So the idea is that um, back 100 years ago, for the demand curve for telephones was more elastic. So given the same price, here I change price from P star to this P nu, um, you had a move from Q star to this quantity with the superscript to be elastic, so you had a really big change in, um, quanti in quantity demanded. However, as um, telephones became more of a necessity, the demand curve looks more like this. It becomes more steeper, uh, or inelastic as we'd say. And now given the same change in price from P star to this P nu, we now have this relatively smaller change in quantity demanded. Okay, moving on to part D. Part D asks, um, do uh, consumers in less developed countries like Guatemala spend proportionally more on their income on equipment for producing things at home, like sewing machines, than uh, consumers 
in uh, more developed countries like Canada. So uh, I guess Canadians don't buy, you know, relative to their income, they don't spend quite as much on things like sewing machines and other stuff that leads to home production. Um, where in Guatemala they spend a higher proportion. So first off to point out is that income in Canada is just significantly larger than in Guatemala. So this suggests that as income rises, uh, relative spending on home production goods, uh, you know, like sewing machines, um, decreases relative the, to the spending of other goods. So from this information, we know at the very least that uh, demand for sewing machines and you know stuff like home production goods is what we call income uh, elastic. So income elastic means that as income rises, the demand for these goods increases. You know, it's like a normal good potentially. Um, but it increases at a slower rate than income. So income elastic goods are typically thought of like, uh, you know, like necessities. So uh, income goes up, you, your demand for this thing uh, does increase, um, but you know, it's not increasing at the, the same rate as income. Uh, a lot of times as you get more income, you know, you continue to buy uh, necessities, um, but you also shift into newer goods, luxury goods. Um, and then for stuff like sewing machines, it's possible, though we're not given enough information to to say whether or not it's true in this case, but it's possible that sewing machine here is an inferior good, an inferior good being one that as income rises, uh, demand uh, for that good decreases. That is to say, as income rises, the demand for sewing machine decreases. Um, but we're not really told whether or not that's the case here. Great, hopefully that's helpful, um, and let me know if you have any questions.